created this with someone else, correct? This was not just you? This was, uh, you were like, there was a team? No. No. All right, well, I mean... No, I mean, I spend a lot of time, like, you spend a lot of time on a singular thing to then be asked if someone else was, like, involved in the in the creation of it, which is I, disappointing. Hey, what's up? I had a chance to sit down and talk with none other than Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, so this video is the interview basically in its entirety. Not gonna lie, it took a weird turn at one point and... Well, I'll let, you, I'll let you guys watch it, but stay tuned for tomorrow uh, because tomorrow we're going to be unboxing box one, which is Neil's game and puzzle box, escape box. We're gonna be unboxing that for the first time. You get an exclusive view at it. And uh, yeah, enjoy and let me know what you think about the interview. I think it went really well, except for that one part. Um, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll get the answers we're looking for in tomorrow's video. So this might actually be a good time. I might cut this into the beginning of the video, but this is a good time to tell you there are no spoilers. So if you're looking to buy this and get pick this up, do not worry. We do not spoil anything in this video. So feel free to watch this and give it a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined today by none other than uh, the legend himself, Neil Patrick Harris. What? what? Uh, so first of all, you guys absolutely, okay, spammed Neil on his Instagram, maybe a little too hard. Listen, you, when you have followers on social media, you're not joking. Like you're, you have <laughs> followers. I'm pretty I sure know. there's an overlap though. I'm pretty sure you already have all of my followers. <laughs> Neil, so today we're going to be talking about something that is very cool that I've been looking forward to that I'm really excited to talk about your board game your puzzle your escape your something i don't i don't know what to put my current thing this is amazing by dude the way. we do have to talk about this at a certain at some point it's called box one i created it uh and i i, I don't want to just i don't want to start with talking about it right because then it's an interesting thing as you'll find out i feel like it's something that would be right in your wheelhouse but mm. if you explain it too much then it gives it away gives it away and so Absolutely. it's I feel like I'm a carnival pitch man you know saying step right up and see the two-headed lady yeah you're, you're you're the guy at the magic shop trying to sell me a trick without telling me what it is correct <laughs> yeah. that's kind of the we know the that <laughs> all right so we'll get we'll um, get to that because I can go on and on I have questions for you too so can this be sort of a back and forth absolutely 100%. because you do you get to do the things that I love to do like whenever i'm at a store a, a, a bookstore or a, a mall i head straight to the place where there would be puzzles or any kind of like tabletop games tabletop games not my strong suit but puzzles mm. yes i love all of this and i often see them and don't buy them and then and then i've i've come upon you and i'm a, 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 an avid subscriber and watching you solve the things is just as good i don't have yeah. to pay for it. it doesn't have to sit around on my desk and you get like, how do you get, so here's my first question for you. How do you get the $20,000 things? <laughs> like this sent, guy here. That was what? <laughs> and then the box that followed up on it? Wait, yeah. how does, do they sell those? Yeah, so um, for these particular ones, uh, first of all, amazing that you watch my videos. Uh, super stoked about that. So I've contacted a few companies, um, but they build props for escape rooms. And uh... Yeah, so they're already thinking along the lines of, you know, sequential discovery and, and you know, something that, that you can solve in an hour perhaps. And they have this wide team of people and engineers and programmers and 3D printers. And, and they, they usually have these big workshops that they, that they just basically can make anything in. And I thought it'd be really cool because there's definitely an overlap between, you know, puzzles, magic and escape and board games and all this. And so I had the first one commissioned, which was a lot of money. It was a lot of money out of my pocket, uh, hoping that, you know, the internet would save me and that, that you know somehow the algorithm would kick in and it would pay for itself which it did thankfully and which allowed me to you you to, want to get you another make one. them a company make an escape room in a box pretty much and you paid for it through people watching you figure out how to escape from it yeah Dear yeah so genius. i mean it's amazing genius. I mean, thank you, but it's amazing really that this platform exists for uh, niches like this because these type yeah. of niches like puzzles and escape and stuff, they're just that, just like magic. They're a small portion 
of of reality. They're not not everybody's into it. It's not like music or Truth. Or, or or cinema. Right? There's a lot less people interested in this. So uh, having a community on YouTube um, really allows for everybody across the world, and and you know collectively we're we're a lot. There's a lot of us. You know what I mean? So we get together make these things you know for the viewers and stuff like that and uh what's cool about this too is that this is not something that everybody can buy and like you said they kind of live vicariously through the videos uh to you know to watch them solve it and so that's we found a you and know, also a truth be told truth be told i'm terrible at solving those things i have all the mysterious package company stuff i have all of the the, the books on ciphers and i uh, my, my husband for my 30th or 40th birthday or like i think my my 30th birthday threw me an escape room across America where wow. I had to go for seven days to all these different locations. He had QR codes that were, that had different years on them. And I would scan this was, this was, I'm 47. So this was like, no, it must've been when I was 35 anyway. Still. And, and so I would see on my, on my camera phone, the little disc would turn into a video that I would play and it would be a wow. friend of mine who would then give me a clue to go to another place. I loved it. I ate it up. I was terrible at it. So yeah. I can't solve the things. I, I always want to be on Survivor so I can play all the puzzles. <laughs> and I feel like I'd be so good observing and then like trying to put the tree together with all the little intricate pieces, I would be terrible at. So it's also a joy to like just feel like I'm as as quick as you are with solving some of these things. Well, I mean, thank you, but I think that's part of the uh, I think that's part of the joy for a lot of people is knowing that I'm not an engineer. And I'm not a professional, you know, I, don't, I can't decipher, you know, CIA codes or anything, but to, to have someone who's, you know, I guess just a normal guy, uh, they get to live those emotions through me. So I'm not necessarily, and some of that, you know, it's frustrating and they're, they're screaming at their screen like, no, you missed it. You missed the clue. Right. But that's, I think part of the fun is seeing a, you know, dope like me try and try and figure these out. Obviously for those watching and, and for those of you who don't know, like Neil is a, I hate using the term because it's the term they've, they've labeled you with online, but amateur magician, but you've been doing magic for a long time. This is my favorite amateur magician trick. Look at that. There's not even any props of that. <laughs> amateur, an amateur magician. But that's, that's, yeah. that's how they, that's how they've categorized. Obviously because I think, you know, acting and, and, and directing and writing and all these, you know, wonderful things that you do have, have you know, taken precedent over your magic. But uh, that being said, you were, if I'm not mistaken, um, head of the committee over at uh, Magic Castle or something, right? Something. I was the president of the Academy of Magical Arts where the Magic right. Castle is for right. yeah, three years, vice president before that, on the board director before that. And that's not and something that. an amateur can get away with, like between you and I. I feel like right. that's, that's pretty substantial. Well, magic has been mm, like my super passion and hobby since I was seven or eight years old. I grew up in New Mexico. There was a mall there and there was a magic shop called Fool's Paradise. Great name. And I went there and fell in love with this whole notion that magic props can exist behind a counter. Gimmicked coins and yeah. gimmicked cards and all that. And then it comes with the pattern. You don't even know how it works until you pay the money and you get to the experience. So for decades I've been into magic, but with magic, you can kind of take one of two paths, at least as far as I'm concerned. You can either become a performing magician or you can be more of an um, observing um, historian of magic. I've always, my magic for me has been like talk show style. Mm. I got to perform for Johnny Carson, I Jim saw that in Arsenio Hall. I saw, I saw the, uh, I saw the, uh, the, what was it? The, the barcode reveal. Yeah, man. On Johnny Carson. That killed me. That was great. That was so clever. So in, I guess in the, in the performing way, I would consider myself amateur. In the smarts way, right. in the knowledge of, the history of, I know an F ton about magic. Mm. I've studied it for a long time. And as you said, I was, you know, the Magic Castle is probably the, the preeminent place in America to go for magic. Uh, if not the world aspire to just get into the place. And when I was a member, I was asked if I wanted to be on the board of directors. And that seemed like I, I asked, what does that entail? And they said, not much. You have to go to monthly meetings. And I thought, oh, that's cool to kind of see how it works. My best friend is a um, comedy magician named Ed Alonzo. And he performs around a lot. He was on Saved by the Bell. He's, and so I would hang out with Ed. And then I became, a, uh, I was on the board of directors. And then they asked, if I wanted to be vice president after a term. And I said, what does that mean? And they said, no, nothing really. It just means you get to be vice president. And I said, oh, okay, sure. Uh, I guess Cary Grant before was hmm. uh, on the board of directors ages ago. And then the president at the time uh, quit in a huff. And so then like, uh, like a weird beauty pageant, I was suddenly number two thrust into position numero uno. And the Magic Castle 
and the uh, AMA was not doing well, like really mm. in financial straits, right. a lot of issues. And so I got a very quick education about how to make, to turn a $9 million business right. uh, around. And we did some, wow, some pretty baller, remarkable things, but I got to learn a lot about business, but I also got to learn a lot about magic magicians, how they think. You're not a horse um, and pony show at all. You were actually pulling strings and making big decisions. It wasn't just like, Oh, Neil's the face of, you know, this now you actually actively had to help turn around, you know, this for thing. sure. I was, I was, hel I was helming proper board wow. meetings and like making big financial decisions, wow. which is an interesting place to be for magic because most people think of magic as being a hobbyist kind of right. ideal, right? Yeah. Most uh, birthday party magicians or yeah. corporate, corporate gig magic. Mm -hmm. And, and those people are scrapping in order to make money. There's a very, there's very few magicians in the Ed Alonzo, Justin Willman, Dan White kind of world, David Blaine, Copperfield, mm -hmm. obviously, but that's a handful. Yeah. It's hard to make a living doing it. So I have incredible respect for them. And magic, yeah, has always been just, I don't know, I think it's the coolest hobby. It, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can concur in that if you're really interested in numbers, you can be, you can head towards mentalism mm -hmm. and you can figure out and learn how numbers and sequences work in really remarkable ways. If you're into dexterity now, these kids with the, with the palmistry yeah. stuff and the cardistry stuff is unbelievable, but yeah. that requires like hundreds of hours of like crystal methy <laughs> dexterity. <laughs> I don't know how that's done, but then that you can go into coins, you can go into illusion, which is black art and interesting forced perspective stuff. So for me, the meth, meth the method, Mm. Interesting. For me, the method is, I think, paramount. Like I'm most, I'm, I'm most turned on by method. Yeah. When I, and I, and I, and I said interesting because I think it speaks to my obsession with escape rooms and boxes and, and and solving it because there is a method. These two things are linked together, and I can't quite figure it out. There is yeah. a method, and so I'm, I'm very impressed by method. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say, I would say, I'm the same way, and I didn't, uh, didn't realize that until much later in magic. There's, I mean, there's definitely a correlation between how things work. Uh, you know, if you're someone with, uh, I wouldn't say engineer, but an engineering mind, someone who likes to know how things work and, you know, puzzles and escape room and magic methods. These are all things that sort of overlap. I, 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 I say to my friends a lot that, uh, you know, there's, there's people who build cuckoo clocks, you know, the, the, all the right. intricacies and cuckoo, and there's people who collect them, but you, you can't have one without the other. Like you can't have people who simply just collect cuckoo clocks and no one building them and vice versa. So it takes both people to appreciate you know, like a duck skimming over the water. You, you can see the duck just sort of floating there or underneath you got, you know, you got the legs doing this. Pitter patter. Exactly, and you, and you need that. You need both worlds for that. You know what I also dig? I also dig the idea, and, and a lot of magicians aren't this way, of, of not being afraid to fail, yeah. of pushing what it is they do. Too many magicians, in my opinion, come up with their four minute act and their 12 minute extended act and they, they hone it and they get really good at it. And then they, that's all they do. That's their little thing that they do. And they do it at every convention and every cruise ship. And they just do that same act. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But I think there's a other level of now I've done that. I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to invent a, a levitation and yeah. I'm going to research levitations. I'm going to come up with one that hasn't been done before. And I'm going to try that and I'm going to test it. I'm going to play test it. I'm going to do it in front of audiences like a stand up comic coming up yeah. with their own material. Magic doesn't often work that way. And, and yeah. actors do get to work that way, right? Barney Stinson, like that was his whole vibe was like, was let's have a party and we'll go out and we'll get knackered and we'll paint the town. And if it doesn't work out that way, we'll just pretend like it did. And we'll make it like, I think there's something about life that, I, that is exciting about trying new things, about, about going into a room and the door locks and you've never been in this room and having mm. to escape from it. That flop sweat feel of I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm I'm excited to break through. You're alive. Yeah. I, I think you have breakthroughs when you do that kind of stuff. And I feel like life deserves to be filled with breakthroughs. I mean, my God, who knew a year ago that this pandemic's lifestyle would become our new normal? Yeah. That's a year ago that did none of this had happened. Yeah. And so everything changes so often that I feel like like what you are passionate about, what I'm passionate about, the reason I did box one, the reason I wrote my autobiography as a choose your own adventure book, the reason that I like 
like anti-structure is because it forces you to sort of reevaluate. Let's go see Sleep No More. Why see a movie yeah. when you can go to New York and put on a mask and, yes. and, and, and go through a hundred rooms of a mansion and meet different people that are doing interpretive dance? What? That's the life that I'm all about living and promoting. Absolutely. I mean, you knocked out eight questions I had right there. So I'm very- <laughs> I do go on. <laughs> but- um, I don't know what thinking? causes it. <laughs> oh, Red Bull. Um, so Red Bull said to me, if you, uh, well, if you can, if you drink, we'll give you some free Red Bull right. since I was on How I Met Your Mother. They said, mm -hmm. we'll give you Red Bull. You like it? Sure, we'll give it to you. Uh, we'll give you a free Red Bull. If you can drink a Red Bull on the show, we'll give you a, like a Red Bull fridge. I had them write me drinking a Red Bull. I turned it into a six pack. I took six Red Bulls and I had them make a little plastic thing, right? We, we made a little plastic thing and I crushed them all. So at the end of it, I think I was, I was sleeping with an older woman and she was insatiable. Um, and so I, I, and so in the shot on the thing, I drank the sixth one and slammed them all. It. Yeah. They gave me Red Bull for life. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's some that's some fine product placement. I, I yeah, I completely agree with everything you said prior and complacency I think in, in magic is a bit different because we get uh, positive feedback real easily um, comparatively to you know a lot of other things. I often compare magic to comedy and we're in sort of the knock knock joke phase I still feel like uh, where there are people on stage still doing knock knock joke material. Fair. Mind you the whole audience is laughing. Uh, and so they don't see anything wrong with that. Meanwhile, there are comedians or magicians backstage and, and we're, we're diving into much deeper subjects and much, you know, uh, different things that people normally wouldn't tackle. And we're realizing that maybe, you know, that's hacky and this is the real stuff here. And I just think we're still in that phase where magic is sort of still in the knock knock joke phase where nobody can really tell uh, the difference between you know, uh, good magic and bad magic, really. That's a cool analogy, because also with knock-knock joke and, and, and comedy, you don't have to be on a stage to tell a knock-knock joke. Okay. And in the same way with magicians, you don't have to be on a, you have to, don't have to be a performing magician to do a magic trick. Most people just, see yeah, their yeah, awkward uncle do magic at a potluck at, you know, at their house on a family reunion. Absolutely. So that's, that's uh, I agree that's similar. And there's better stuff. And now we live in this world where you have all these influencers now in magic. Mm -hmm. Magic, magic like starts to die, like a pendulum needs to swing back, right? I feel like this weird P.T. Barnum, Kermit the Froggy kind of guy that's able to spotlight, Kermit the Frog does this with his hands. <laughs> able to spotlight and showcase that magic is relevant or cool or yeah. exciting so i get to perform magic sometimes but i all, but most importantly i get to crow about magic mm. and sometimes it still feels like it might be kind of dying off mm. but now here we are with a whole new younger set of people who are online and have a social presence and are able to do some really kick-ass magic i don't know that they would be able to do that on a cruise ship or yeah. even that they would want to so it's mm. having its own interesting kind of resurgence, I think, I hope. I agree with that. I think uh, I fully agree with everything. What you magic stuff do you do? What would be, if you were a performing magician wearing a tuxedo, Yeah. what would you perform? So I used to be, I performed, uh, I haven't done a show in two years. That was the, uh, that was the I just got too busy and it just uh, just became this and this is oh, So you were a performing magician? I, yeah, absolutely. Um, Arts? It got, it got, I mean, cards, yeah, close-up stuff. I never, I've done a few stage things, but never really delved into creating like an, an experience on stage. It was most, nice. you know, you got 20 minutes to fill up. So grab some stage tricks, that type of thing. But uh, it, it, close up, I mean, I would, I, I'm the type of guy who loves close up, you know, impromptu sort of whatever's in your pocket, whatever's in your pocket, let's just go with that. And uh, a lot of mentalism, a lot of, you know, that type of stuff, just stuff that I don't need to have on me. And the more that I perform, this is something I, a lot of magicians go through is that my first gigs, I was just riddled with, you know, I was going through things. No, not this one. Now this one. Right. And I, and I, where is that dove? Yeah. And then come back home, empty it all out across the bed and realize I used maybe 10% of it. Um, and so, you know, through doing that after years and years, I would end up with my phone, a ring, a rubber band, a deck of cards. And that's pretty much it. And I could, I could, I could slay love for it. an hour if I needed to. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, so it was, yeah, it was more of a minimal, minimalizing everything. And now it's just basically, you know, I just do stack work and 
that's about nice. it. And, uh, that's all. That's all I really do. And I think the money's probably better doing what you're doing now than doing it, walking around doing impromptu magic. It, 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 is, blessing. it is. It is. But it also allows me to showcase wonderful magicians, uh, which sure. has been a really cool thing that I did not expect. I'm able to actually impact people's lives that are performing or that are developing their social presence or that are trying to sell, you know, a trick for their, you know, a great trick, uh, but maybe it's not marketed in a way that reaches a broader audience and that type of thing, or even just reacting to, you know, uh, people at home. Uh, we, you know, I have a Reddit page where we have, you know, the fans send in, I give them like a, I give them a quest and I say, all right, well, pandemic magic, what can you come up with, with let's say toilet paper and soap and, and like a mask and stuff. And they'll send me amazing clips, cool. you know, and, and we'll go through that, we'll watch them. And, you know, it, it gets to be, this cool community where now because of this I get to uplift all sorts of other people so that's been the coolest thing really well played, well played you thank you um I just sidebar Halloween costume ideas for this year what's uh, what are you guys going with <laughs> do you, you want to spoil it or no well every year we do sort of an Instagram picture of our family and so we have an idea it's a little bit it's a little bit trickier because we have there's just more limitations um, because of masks are in it here <laughs> masks are super 2020 <laughs> um so we have an idea we'll see if we can pull it off okay now the kids are old enough our kids are 10 twins mm -hmm. boy and a girl and so i think they um they're more interested in trick-or-treating so i think we're mm -hmm. gonna go to a friend's house and everyone's in their own little sort of sure. negative bubble yeah and who knew that negative bubble would be a positive expression <laughs> and uh we're gonna have them trick-or-treat in each room so we'll have an, an adult inside each room of the house and then they'll knock on the door and they'll either be a trick room or a treat room. That's so cool. So like the trick, one of the trick rooms is gonna be just uh, can lights that are pointing at, at them. So that's like a blast of light that walk in and then silly string from behind the thing. Just <laughs> Gideon is gonna be, I think, uh, Calvin of Calvin and Hobbes. Oh my gosh. I know, I got him reading Calvin wow. and Hobbes and it was the coolest parental thing, man. That sense of humor makes me so happy. Dude, I grew up on Calvin and Hobbes. Like so a 10 year old would even know. Me too. But sadly now his sense of humor is kind of like sardonic and wow. like a little bit uh, like hardcore. And so yeah. now I have to apologize to his teachers because he's saying Calvin kind of retorts. So, and um, I think, I'm not sure Harper, Harper always likes to be a um, zombified something. She's been oh, nice. a zombified ballerina, nice. cheerleader. Not sure. Yeah, I'm, I was, I'm uh, glad it's that and not slutty. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it. I'll agree with you, man. It's tough going into a uh, Halloween store, and I'm just like, they just pulled out all of the sex shop stuff, right? Like, they're just overlapping all of a sudden, and nobody's Candy talking cake? about it. Yeah, you're like, it's all handcuffs. Yeah. You can be that? Mario, or you could be sexy Mario. Why can't she be Mario too? Why does she have to be sexy Mario? Yeah, the boy costumes are not at all sexy. And yeah. the girl costumes are almost exclusively sex. They legit pulled them off, you know, pull, you know, they just like merge. I, I have a feeling the sex stores and the Halloween stores just talk before, before Halloween and get together. <laughs> Booster sales. Um, let's see, let's get to, let's get to an interesting question here. Okay, what's your, what would your favorite type of puzzle be? I'm, I'm a big fan of like sequential discovery, but I also like lock puzzles. I'm not into burr puzzles so much. The ones that you gotta, you know, take apart and put together. I feel, you know, not, not bright enough for those, but what's, uh, what's maybe what's like the puzzle that got you into like all of this? I know you mentioned the escape uh, that your husband made for you, but is there, is there any memory of a puzzle? I'm thinking of like, an, if I was in an escape room and there were a, a myriad of types of puzzles, right? Is that, or you, you don't mean like a jigsaw puzzle puzzle? No. Yeah. Like a, like a, like a physical. I'm good with sequencing mm. i'm good with recognizing patterns i love labyrinths i'm really good mm. with uh, figuring yeah. out quick ways through stuff so my spatial awareness is pretty good mm. not as good with la with like languagey things right certain things that are like right in front of i overthink mm. so the, the the simpler ones uh uh defy me you seem like like this guy <gasps> What is that? This is pretty cool. This is uh this what? is one of my favorite puzzles actually. And what all these things that? like just move independently and it's really real. I'll send you a link to this, but this is uh that reminds me of that did you the the, the app of uh, the game the box? Yeah. Yeah, the that, room. The room, sorry, the room. Yeah. Much like it. I've I, yeah, we had uh, actually the company that did this did another one 
that it resembles the room and had a VR component to it, an AR component to it, which was pretty cool as well. Oh, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, send me a link to that. That was amazing. Yeah, those, those types are my favorite. Yeah, I like the old time meets the new technology because yeah. I'm a big, in, I'm, my magic, uh, my favorite magic type is would probably be illusion, mm. probably stage magic from back at the turn of the century. Mm. Thurston, Dante, traveling yeah. by train, big, you know, auditoriums filled with variety right of shows where people are dressing in top hats in order to see it. I think that stuff was great. Coming so back, dark back wood. From the, east, the, the, the Orient bringing the, uh, <laughs> love. bringing the exotic Orient back. Yeah, man, that was the first world. Pepper's Ghost Illusions were all done during then. People would, would freak out and pass out when, when apparitions appeared because they'd never seen anything like that before. Absolutely. Love all of that stuff. So I like the old, the old school. Very but, cool. Yeah, this puzzles, I mean, I, Although we just did, we just did, I was in Berlin, Germany. I just got back a couple days ago. I'm filming the new Matrix movie. And wow. we filmed in San Francisco and then we filmed in Berlin. And uh, oddly, escape rooms there are still open. All, everything's disinfected between everything hmm. and everything. You have to wear a mask when you're in them and stuff like that. But I got to do a whole bunch of them. Oh, wow. And they have really good ones in Berlin. And one of yeah. them was- like I hear they white, got some hardcore ones there too. A white room. You have to wear gloves and you have to wear white booties, and you go into this white room, white walls, nothing, and a white uh, island in the middle. That's it, go. And you have to start wow. pushing around, and you find, oh, that's a panel. Oh, that's and inside cool. there's, now it's like buttons, and they're blinking at different things, and so I'm just staring at the buttons, oh, and so amazing. figuring out the pattern, <laughs> and replicating the pattern, and then chink, something else opens, and there's additional rooms. Do you see that poster? Yeah. Ask Alexander. Alexander, man, who knows? Love that one. That's actually a door with nice. a fingerprint scanner. And, and behind that is uh, an escape room in the making. So I'm, I'm building my own escape room. Stop it. In my own so studio. I'm at, my, I'm at our, our farm in East Hampton, New York, that um, we spent a long time kind of renovating. It's called Funhouse Farm. Oh, and wow. my big thing that I'm building is um, a labyrinth hedge maze. Oh, so cool. But what I want it to be is not just where the kids can go left, left, right, right, left, right, right. left, and shout it to their friends and then solve it, but I'm going to have it be an escape the hedge maze and so that throughout there will be grates that you can't oh, get through with locks and padlocks. You have to cool. backtrack and you have to undo things so you can change stuff up. That's like the real life labyrinth. Totally. Hey, you know, there's a thing that I saw that you, you probably know about this, but it's a it's an electromagnetic kind of thing that you can plug into a secret door where mm -hmm. it, you have to give a specific knock. And if you give the knock at the right, like you can, you, you make it and then it wow. memorizes it. And then when you give the secret knock, the door unlocks. That, that, that's super cool. That's pretty cool. And yeah. is this something that you just want to have your, like a man cave? You want an escape yeah, room well, so when it, friends it, come it, over, they can do it? Or are you going to have people be able to come over? I mean, it's all for content, really. I can like, I mean, that's what, that's what I tell the accountants, but it's, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to hook up um, cameras in there and a microphone. And the idea is when friends come over, people come over, because I have, uh, you know, I have people come here where we do collabs with other YouTubers and, and nice. that type of thing. So I'm going to give them a tour. And when they get in there, I'm just going to close the door <laughs> and lock. And there's a keypad on the inside to get out and they have to figure out, you know, what the code is. And so it's going to be all... Fantastic. Yeah, and there's lights in there that'll flash red smoke that comes out. It's Great. Uh, yeah, this this really cool. I mean, but but again, yeah, it's 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 all for me. Obviously, of everybody course. can enjoy it, but I mean, I'm the one who gets the probably Dude, the biggest. Late at night, when I when I could be watching very X-rated things, I'm watching like the I'm watching the vi videos of people who sell things for escape rooms. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like uh, if you go Mostly to the dark Eastern corners of like, European yeah, Russian, Russians? yeah. Oh, absolutely. I I've been in contact nervous. with a few of them, and it's. You, have you heard about the escape rooms in Russia? By the way, no. But, uh, no, a friend no of mine but I feel like it's a metaphor coming. It's like there there are levels of hardcoreness that you really have before you go in. Yeah, I've had friends go in and we're like, I didn't max out. I was like, you know, medium level. And he's like, I basically got the shit kicked out of me. He's like, these guys, they, they take it absolutely serious. Wow. You know, but now that's the only thing I want to do. I want to go and try. It's like when you go through haunted houses and then you you find out that there's ones where they can touch you and then right. they start getting hardcore and more hardcore. Yeah, yeah and I, I feel like escaping, you know, a hardcore Russian um, escape room is a really good title for a video as well. So. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people, I think, try to do that in, in their real life. 
in yeah. a non-escape room kind of way. So yeah, it could be a little too close to home. But yeah, or maybe exciting. firing for some trying to get out. I don't know. Um, so let's let's talk about box one for a second. Please, let's talk about box one. Okay, so here's what here here's what I was with some friends, and I was hanging out with them, and we were playing a game, and we had bought the game at a big book superstore. Mm. And there was so there's a whole game section, you know, with all the games, apples to apples, and mm. and uh, cards against humanity, and there's they're all great, but there's so many of them. And so I was sitting there, I was thinking, you know, what would be cool because I don't, in the same way, I wouldn't want to make my own tequila right now because right. Every, everyone has tequila. Sure. Like, I'm not going to make a, a a party game because I'd be competing with some. 30, 40 games, yeah. I thought, wait a second, here's a niche, a party game for one person. Everyone can have this and needs this at, a, at some time in their lives. A, a divorcee, a widow, a kid at, at college. How many in quarantine? A quarantine now, this was accidental, but 100,000% yes. Or even just someone you're, you're your loved one is away with their friends and you're by yourself. You can read a book or something, or you can have a game that's just for you. So it's, mm. it's puzzly. It's uh, sort of games in theory ish. It has a little bit of a narrative, but it's just truly not for you and your, and your best friend to play together on some night. This, this is a thing that you're supposed to play by yourself. It says uh, cre created by one designed for one or something like that. Wow. A game for one created by one. And I thought, okay, that's a super cool idea. And that was- This is so extravagant for just a one player game. Like this is not sure. cool to see this. This is so cool. Well, but that's its own thing, right? So I, you know, Jonathan Bame and the gang from Theory 11, who did a great job on the packaging. Great job on packaging, which is important because when you're, right now it's only available at Target. Mm. Uh, when I think they, I think they ship internationally, FYI, if you're watching this, not in the States. Right. But um, you gotta have it be, easily noticed yeah and so i wanted it to be noticed in a in a fancy way ooh la la and then you think oh that's a decent price for that and then you, you again but you don't not quite sure what you're getting into right and then uh and and there's some things inside of it it's not necessarily what you think it's going to be and it was it took a whole lot of thought and foresight and as Man. you now know and you guys watching now know like i care a lot about experiential entertainment mm -hmm. and i really would never ever put my name on something that i didn't believe in and this uh, honestly more than anything i've ever done i came up with the idea i came up with the title i thought this is a really this could be a really cool thing and if it is as cool as i hope it can be i really want a lot of people to check it out looking forward to it i haven't delved in yet i've been told not to You've, you've sent me this and, and uh... well, here's the problem. And this is, this speaks to why I didn't just send you one. Cause I'm sending some to people to look at, to say, you know, to review it and stuff, yeah. but I sit and watch you fully break everything down. So I, I'm a little bit reticent to have you like showcase it as much as I want everyone in your tribe to see it, because I feel like these are the people that would like it. Yeah. I hope that you are somehow able to and it'll be a, it'll be a tricky challenge be to get people to be excited by the content without revealing the content because that's yeah hundred percent and that's the that's the sort of thing about uh, this type of puzzle because I wouldn't mind so much revealing how this works because I'm the only one who has one and right but dude you got my deck of cards from theory 11 that has its own little hidden secret <laughs> thing within it and you went through the entirety like, every step you were like filming every secret i was watching going no chris ramsey please out of, stop out of stop for the love of god he did wait quite a while before touching that we, I know we didn't want to get into it right away I, I was simultaneously like very proud that you were doing it and that it was complicated and stuff. But even that I, I hid, you know, if you don't know what we're talking about, go back and check it out. But we just hid a secret like rabbit down the rabbit hole puzzle that I never talk about ever. Mm -hmm. And so that every once in a while you can just find something in your life and go, wait a second, there's these more to the cars. What? Are... Nothing in the boxes and there's a special 
bonus puzzle and it's just a deck of cards and then you figure out that these go together in a way and then you go to a mm. website and you're like, what the f yeah yeah i, love I mean i feel like i feel like again we're going to touch on the creativity part but you did your your choose your own autobiography i mean you you know the deck of cards and now this so yeah it, yeah, it, I did wrote my fourth uh, middle grade fiction book uh, called Magic Misfits. Right, absolutely. That was and recently as well. Those teach kids trick magic tricks and there's codes and ciphers in those. I love that. Listen, I was a precocious little kid, um, worked at a bookshop when I was nine or 10 years old in tiny town, New Mexico. And I loved Choose Your Own Adventure books. I loved Encyclopedia Damn. Brown. I loved the notion that a kid, forget adults, I mean, we're talking about adults, but I'm saying before then, when you're a kid yeah. and you become one of this type of person, when you are, when you are honored with intellect, when you are honored with some sense of wisdom that you can discover, that like a self-discovery, I think mm -hmm. Walt Disney knew how to do that with, with, in his theme parking, when you could see things that only you could see that wasn't pointed out to you. I think Jim Henson did that a lot when, yeah. when, he, when, when you were watching the dark crystal or something you would see things that were a little bit dark that you had to process Grimm's fairy tales I think all yeah. of these things I feel like make you older in the coolest way so if there's hidden shit in all these random things for kids at least for me I would go it, would, it was they were mind blowers so I'm not trying to blow minds I, but I that's that's sort of where I'm coming from and I'm, yeah I'm just, I mean you know brings out the kind of kid in all of us that's that's still there yeah, like, man, we're, for sure. We're not going anywhere. We're still here. We have responsibilities and stuff. But so glad that some of us grew up to create things like this for the rest of us to enjoy. I mean, that's super cool. <laughs> and with Magic Misfits books, I'm hoping to get a new generation of kids into the world of thinking things are cool and finding out what codes and ciphers mean. And also with Box One, I'm hopeful that people who don't really dabble in escape rooms and aren't really comfortable being locked in a room with red lights and fog on them yeah. uh, will suddenly realize oh this is turning into that maybe and i actually like it and way more than i thought i could it's it's such an interesting thing how you've been able to meld the two together and taking like a classical board game and you know just like the cards incorporating online ciphers and adding some digital you know components into into these creations that otherwise i mean there are a ton of games out there that are you know make you have to critical think and all all these type of things but adding those components really broadens the horizon in terms of creativity and in terms of where is this going like i i don't know you know and you're in for that surprise i feel and i think that that's part of the journey is feeling like you're you're digging deeper into something that's greater than what it appears to be it's so fun to do content that you don't know what you're about to experience. And tell me about Space it. Space Mountain is not a great roller coaster, but it's in the dark, man. It's amazing. You don't know which way you're going to turn. Omakase sushi is the best because you just sit there and they bring you courses and you don't even know what you're going to be eating next. Like yeah. that's, that's the life, right? So yes, I love things. I mean, Box One's not as digital. It's much more practical and kind of tactile. Yep. Um, you get a couple things with it that I, you know, that are kind of bespoke and cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's not super modern, I would mm -hmm. say, but that's intentional so that it has, it feels a little historical, not historical right. uh, and a history lesson, but it feels like it's been around for a while. You know, we wanted to add, yeah. it looks like stickers yeah. and corners and things. So it could have been from, the same world as the box that you just showed me like it stood you know? the test of time yeah yeah exactly um so let me ask you about the creator of this game because you created this with someone else correct this was not just you this was uh you were like there was a team no no it was just me it was no <laughs> it's weird no this so this was a hundred percent by you because I've I've heard differently. I've well, heard I mean, Theory Eleven helped me out when we do the design. Yeah, um, but not the design part. No. I mean, like the actual the story creation. Yeah, the actually like there's there's another element here with with uh, someone who you created this with. Is that true or no? Um, not well. That's a weird no, no. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm I'm flustered by that because all right, you know, maybe we'll cut this whole portion out. Who knows? <laughs> You're not the right. first person to have asked that, but really, okay. No, it's by it's it says on the box. Didn't mean to buy one a game for one. So all right, maybe it, 
No, that's people have been saying <laughs> online. People have said that this there's a guy Martin something who is taking credit for the game. Oh, okay. which I think is odd. Weird. But, um, All right, we'll sort yeah. of bring it up. <laughs> um, cool. Well. Neil, I... I treat my staff really nicely, too, by the way. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't want you to think that I'm trying to take credit for everything, but that's, like, weird to me. I don't know. All right. Well, I mean... Look, no, I mean, I spend a lot of time, like, you spend a lot of time on a singular thing to then be asked if someone else was, like, involved in the, in the creation of it, which is I... disappointing. But <laughs> regardless... Regardless, I think it's fun, and I and uh, and I feel like once you once well, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, this not gonna lie, this took a weird turn. I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take this. You know what? Here's what I'll do, Neil. I'm gonna. How are you gonna play it? What are you gonna I'm, do? Are you gonna film? You got to film yourself. So I'm going to film myself, but big butt here. I'm not going to reveal any spoilers which is very difficult for me but i will do my best and i will have your team approve it before we we go ahead and post because i, I don't want you could do an post. unboxing thing and you can you want to show do like all the stuff that's in it you could start playing it a little bit of it i was thinking i, think. I was thinking i'm going to cap my reaction to discovering things perhaps. oh that's a cool call that's a Without, really cool you know call. maybe bleep some things out and blur some things out but i definitely want to show people uh, the, what the experience looks like for a guy like me. And also cool. I want to let, you know, all the viewers know and the audience know that the reason I'm doing this is A, out of respect to Neil uh, and, and, you know, the team that created this, but also out of, um, this is something that you can afford. This is something you can possibly buy or even, you know, uh, ask for Christmas and that type of thing. So I don't want to ruin that for anyone who wants to get this for themselves or for someone they, they, they love. Um, I want you guys to experience that as well. We Full can tilt. I really appreciate that because it's just come out and it's only a target for, uh, for a, little, a little time. Then it'll expand everywhere. But I agree with you. Like I, I want, I, it's designed for people who may not have done these kind of things before in addition to for people who love these kind of things. So too many spoilers uh, while might sell some product, I think yeah. might hamper the, the experience. We'll be vigilant uh, in the comments as well to make sure that there are no spoilers there. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for your time. You're, you're amazing. It was amazing to talk to you and listen to you and, and everything you have to say. Uh, really a pleasure. My great pleasure, man. Keep up the great work on the channel. I, I just follow it. I, I, have, I like everything. I subscribe. I do everything you ask me to do uh to keep it to keep uh, all of these things alive because it's like we share so many we share a lot of of uh passions and uh, are enthusiastic about similar stuff so it's great to get to talk to you in person a little out of body because i'm used to watching you on this very same screen but normally i'm just watching you talk to nobody and now i'm like in the bandersnatch kind of situation which is very interesting so <laughs> amazing neil thank Thanks you much. so much for everything and uh if i if i don't talk to you before anything else have a, have a happy holiday. Enjoy your Halloween. Enjoy everything else and uh, stay safe. Thanks, Neil. All right. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. It was really fun talking to Neil. He's such an interesting guy. And I really hope that you guys check out the game. I left the link below where you guys can go and buy it. And if you want to know a little bit more about it, stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we're going to be unboxing it and showing you a little bit of the contents without giving too much away. So leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.